Good morning and welcome to Wholesome Roots. I'm Rose and today we're going to have a homestead update. What is it, Odin? A peanut. Oh. And it has no holes in it. Oh my goodness. Is that one you grew? Yeah. Crack it open. See how it looks inside. We are preparing ourselves for another wonderful weekend working on the homestead. Trying to get a lot done, cleaning up the yard, potting some stuff up from the garden, planting some stuff in the garden, and taking care of all these animals at the same time. By animals, no, I'm not talking about the children. They're behaving. We got the pool set up for them, so they're happy. But all of these other animals on our homestead, here at Wholesome Roots, we have goats, cows, sheep, pigs, turkey, chicken, quail, ducks geese. Did I miss something? That might be everything. We also have some fish and shrimp in tanks and a parrot inside, a couple of dogs and quite a few cats. <laughs> I'm very happy to report that everything is going great with the goats. Our one doe that was very sick from a uterine infection is, knock on wood, completely recovered as far as everything medically goes. She's A-OK. -okay. No more fever. The infection appears to be gone. The extra antibiotics we gave made a big difference and the steroids as well. So she is eating, drinking, peeing and pooping, all of the good things you want to see, except she's still down. But that is something that we have a lot of experience with and we know that we can get her walking again. We just have to do our physical therapy with her every day. She has shown incredible improvement already in that area of mobility. She is trying to stand up and she is holding some weight down when we help her stand. And she is really scooting around well. So I know that it's just a matter of time and we'll see her running around in the pasture again. <laughs> what do you think of those babies? You're very curious about them, huh? So Moose formerly known as Trap. We've been calling him Moose. So that's probably his new name. Has been growing so fast. We had to take his halter off because he outgrew it. And we are just letting him stretch and play. So we're letting Moose out stretch his legs and get some extra exercise he's only has access to the bucks and the pigs not the cows or the little goats so should be pretty safe for him and them he's just learning all the new things all the different smells yeah Good boy. Run it off. He needed this. What are you doing, pretty girl? Are you climbing on me? Are you the sweetest girl? Oh, yes. Always, always wanting to suckle. She just had her bottle. She's not hungry. She just likes it. Sweet girl. It does not matter what time of day I walk out here, I end up with a row of babies asking to love on me. And Squirty Birdie, our one named hen that gets out of the coop and comes and visits us. None of the other ones get out, just her. Well, she has a couple of friends that do sometimes, but she's consistent every morning. Right, Squirty Birdie? And she's one of the friendliest chickens. The boys can pick her up. I don't know if she'll let me. Yeah, no, she's she's more into the boys. She's like, no, nah, you're not a kid. What do you think, huh? And our cotton patch geese, that's the male, are being silly goose because this is my female. 
she has not laid an egg on that nest in a week and yet she won't get off of it and there's no eggs she had one egg and i took it <laughs> so that she would leave the goat stall alone it didn't work the bucks are doing great enjoying some shade and under the pines feeling proud about their uh daughters this year i'm sure yeah The piggies are doing fantastic, aren't they, Bowser? They're doing just wonderful. We're hoping that he's bred someone by now, but we still have not had a litter. So, questioning whether we need to separate him from the ladies for a little while and try again. Reintroducing with pigs sometimes helps, is what I've heard. You know, I'm not a pig expert, just just enjoying the ride. The sheep are curtailing, they're hair sheep, and they're looking really, really bad right now because they're starting to do their natural shed, which comes out in clumps. And uh, truly, the goat back there is fat, and she's eating a piece of pumpkin. She's She likes it. She's always eating. The guinea are doing great. This has become Ryan's favorite animal on the homestead. They just are so self-sufficient and they keep all the bad bugs away. Leave it to the ducks to muddy the water as soon as you fill it with fresh water. Thanks. It's just what I needed. Get back. The chickens are doing wonderful. They uh, kind of they kind of ate this one cane fruit that was close enough for them to eat. The other ones down this row are fully leafed out. Some transplant shock on some of them. Excuse me, I was coming through. You don't have to yell at me for trespassing. They are good guard dogs. So you can see, they'll probably be eaten by the chickens before we get to them, or the ducks, or the guineas, or something. But if we have to, we'll just put some bird netting around this side of the fence too. The cows are doing great. We are calling Trap Moose now. He's, he's just more of a moose. And the other cows are doing wonderful as well. The piney woods have gotten out a few times for us to go catch, but other than that, they're very, very good girls. Aren't you, girl? You're a good girl. <laughs> and who's this beautiful heifer coming to say good morning? Good morning, Daisy. Hello. Hi, baby. How are you? Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Hi. Oh, fine. Just walk away. Started to worry lashes had gotten out because she wasn't coming up to me like the other ones were. So I did my call and she came. Come on, cow. Come on, coo. That gets them moving. Don't want all the trees to be gone by the time you get here. We had to bush hog our yard because we don't have a lawnmower. Well, I take that back. We do have one now that's working. We got it working right after we finished bush hogging. Of course, that's how it always works. But they're getting some of that yummy hay that got cut from all these mixed grasses and weeds that are so full of nutrition. Quail are doing great. Still laying in their food. Silly birds. I've actually been thinking about taking a little break from the quail. We're just, we're not eating their eggs as much. We have so many eggs now. And like I noticed that the last batch of pickled quail eggs I made are still in the fridge. So it's like, I don't want to do another batch if the first batch hasn't even been eaten. And we haven't harvested any for meat reasons in a while because we've had so much other meat from the homestead at a bigger volume. So I think that's a big part of it. So I don't know, we'll see. I, I might get out of them for a little while 
but get back into them later on. But I think that the space that they're in could also be utilized as a milking area for the cows. So if that works out to my advantage and that works, then I don't know. I don't know. That might be a better option. Did I just catch it on video? Did you just splash in the face? Oh, are you a bunch of frogs? Swimming in the swimming pool. First pool day of the year. We've got the pullets out. Well, they're obviously not all pullets. We got some roosters for sure. These are our American breasts and our Narragansett turkeys that hatch together. They're doing really well. Growing up fast, that's for sure. The garden is experiencing a wonderful, beautiful transition as we go from spring to summer. This is gonna have tomatoes, just envision it. And we have so many spring greens that are doing so well right now that it's just so inspiring to come out here and pick something from the garden for our dinner. Look how tall this has gotten. Y'all, this is like taller than me. I didn't realize that when my cilantro would bolt that it would get this tall. I've always just taken it out of the garden when it bolts. Just plant something else in its place. And I've not done well growing cilantro, but this is the first time I've grown cilantro wonderfully. And it looks like I'm gonna be growing coriander wonderfully do as these blooms get pollinated and develop an ovary and seed it will be coriander if you didn't know that i i always really think it's a neat thing that cilantro and coriander are the same plant just different parts we've got these two beds still to clean up i wanted to leave the wood sorrel because it's so delicious it's a nice lemony flavor plant that we forage to snack on or add to salads and it's beautiful it looks like a, a yellow clover. It's gorgeous. I love it. But it's really starting to take over. So we're going to pull them for the tomatoes to go in here and uh, feed them to feed them to the kids and, and the goats. The children kids and the goat kids because everybody likes them. And then we still haven't cleaned up these beds. And that's where we're going to plant our corn this year or some of it at least to see how it does up here. The front yard food forest is doing amazing. It's really taking off. The Egyptian walking onions and comfrey are really growing well. Some of the comfrey didn't make it, but the ones that did are just healthy as can be. And I've even been harvesting off of these for our sick goat. All of the trees have grown a ton. These are, what, two-year-old, three-year-old? Almost, no, My, some of them are only a year old. And this nectarine wowza. And they even did so well that they put on fruit. Now, some people say you should pick off the fruit the first couple of years and let the tree just get strong. I was gonna leave mine and I was gonna treat them with kale and clay to prevent the insect from boring into the fruit. Uh, but I was too late once the clay arrived from Amazon there were already holes of sap coming out so I might get to eat some of these but most of them are beginning to abort and drop from the tree unfortunately that's okay because I will be prepared next spring to be sure to get them treated before that becomes an issue it's a preventative so I have to do it early enough just the right time and I didn't even have the product the kale and clay to do so so I, I have it now so no excuses next spring sadly like many Georgia apple growers know we are experiencing some fire blight this will have to be pruned out and removed before it causes further damage 
but we are getting tons of strawberries every morning. These plants are just loaded and and even these little blueberry bushes are loaded with fruit that we will soon be able to enjoy. I think the bluebird's trying to tell me something. Time to fill up the bird bath. Something that's a part of every good wildlife habitat is a source of water. The bees are active and doing well. All of our swarms are bouncing back and looking good. Probably need to trim the grass around the entrance, but didn't want to get too close with the weed eater, so I might go through and hand cut it. That or have Ryan put on his suit and do it. <laughs> now that'd be a video. We were gifted these very st extra sturdy, extra thick, three, four ring, four rings on it, four spikes. These ones are much sturdier than some of the other ones. And these work fine for tomatoes for the most part. Towards the end of the season, it gets a little overwhelming, but it usually turns out just fine. My daughter's future mother and father-in-law gifted us these. So we were very lucky to acquire them and we'll be using those for growing lots and lots of tomatoes. Happy Naked Gardening Day. We won't be participating here at Wholesome Roots, but we want to wish those of you that are a very wonderful and bug-free day. Ryan's grounding. We're bringing back barefoot gardening. Technically today, we're supposed to be gardening naked, but well, yeah, he's got on shorts. Tricked you, didn't I? It's National Naked Gardening Day after all. Are you guys eating s'mores? Yeah. In the middle of the afternoon? Uh, for the campfire when it's 80 degrees out? Yeah. You're silly. You guys really wanted a campfire and marshmallows, didn't you? Yeah, yeah we wanted it last night and, now I, and I was cold because of the pool to, today. Yeah. Looking good. Anybody who has followed me for any amount of time knows that my tomato plants get completely buried. The whole plant all the way up to the top growth. Would you look at it? Would you just look at that? This early in the season, and we have a swallowtail caterpillar on our bronze fennel already. Wow. Thanks to my sister Emmy for these plants that she let me dig up and steal from her garden. Because this is an important host plant for this swallowtail butterfly. Hey, Laura. Are you guarding the garden? <laughs> This is just one of our four pretty kitties. She is the oldest. She is 12 and she's a fat cat. She likes to come inside and sit on the couch and sleep all day long. But when the weather is nice, she likes to come outside and watch us garden. She's a good girl. And that is Sugar, our most recent and wildest member of our family. She was pretty wild when she came out of our crawl space hissing and growling as a tiny little shouldn't even be weaned from mama baby that we rescued and tamed and she loves playing in the dogwood. And that's Mitzi. She's 10 years old so she's almost as old as Aura and she's a good girl too. She came with our old house. <laughs> but she does not like going inside that much. Every once in a while she'll sneak in the cat door and check things out and then run back out again. She really, really likes to be outside. And then there's Cleo, the best cat in the world. She's hunting right now, so she's not <laughs> paying attention to me. Our livestock guardian dogs are not often seen during the day. Khaleesi is sleeping under there and Titus is sleeping in his house. They sleep all day because they hunt all night looking for any danger on the homestead. 
but she sometimes comes out at feeding. I didn't see her today. We are running out of daylight and I am out of steam. I need to figure out what I'm going to do about dinner. It's days like this where I'm like, oh, I should have planned better. But we've got spoon tomatoes, five, Ananas Nor, five, Phil's one, five, Phil's two, five, Paul Robeson, five, Orange Accordion, five, Pink Ox Art, five, Pineapple, five, Japanese Trifle Black, five, and three, Georgia Streak. And I ran out of the good tomato cages. I have a bunch more tomato cages, but I only like to use the thick gauge and preferably the four ring thick gauge that has four pegs. These only have three in this bed and they're a lot shorter. You see the height difference there? So I like these better, I like these okay, and the rest of them are just junk or good enough for peppers and other plants support but not for tomatoes tomatoes are too wild and that leaves me with two more beds i have to finish cleaning up adding the compost to and plant but that'll have to wait for another day but thanks for watching it was another great day on the homestead it's been a while since we've had a homestead update with everything in it so i hope that a lot of you have watched along and enjoyed this today and because we tend to get more views on these homestead updates. I'm going to go ahead and remind you that we do have a Mary's Heirloom Seeds link that you can use. It's down in the description below. Also, we have an Amazon wish list. If you're looking to support us in any way, those are some ways that you can do that. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful, wonderful week. And we'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.